It's time for the Longines Chronoscope, a television journal of the important issues of the hour, brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. A presentation of the Longine Whitnor Watch Company, maker of Longines, the world's most honored watch, and Whitnor, distinguished companion to the world-honored Longines. Good evening, this is Frank Knight. May I introduce our co-editors for this edition of the Longines Chronoscope? Mr. William Bradford Huey, author and analyst, and Mr. Hardy Burt, noted author and correspondent. Our distinguished guest for this evening is the Honorable Alexis Kirou, permanent delegate from Greece to the United Nations. And Mr. Ambassador, our viewers, of course, recall that it was your nation that suffered the first effort at communist penetration after the Second World War. They also recall that under the Truman Doctrine, our nation lent considerable help to your people in fighting off this communist effort. Now, sir, is the first question, did that joint effort of ours, did it pay off? Uh, has it been completely successful? Of course, it has been perhaps the greatest success now, uh, until now, gained over the communism. The, the, our, our joint effort at repelling the communist effort to take over Greece, you would call that the greatest success over, over the communists over communist. since, since the uh, end of the Second War. Has that aid been largely in uh, military supplies or outright financial aid, Mr. It Ambassador? It started by being uh, largely military uh, supply, then it turned off to the economic uh, uh, side. But after Korea, it came back again to the military. Place. Well, are your, are your borders relatively free of fighting now? Is there any fighting going on at all on your borders? No, there's no fighting at all. You know, Mr. Ambassador, there are a great many countries in Europe that receive financial aid and military help from us, and they are reported not to appreciate it too much, so far as the public is concerned. Is that true in Greece? No, not at all. You do, do you all think they understand all the scope all of our aid? All the Greeks are extremely grateful to the United States. Are they friendly to the United States? They're extremely Well, grateful. sir, uh, now that there's no fighting on your borders and that the <laughs> external threat of communism has been repelled, is <laughs> domestic communism a problem in Greece today? Well, there is uh, this com domestic uh, communist problem is much smaller in Greece than in other countries in uh, Europe. What percentage of your, of your people are, are communists today? I think uh, not more than 10 to 11 how, percent. How, 10 was 10 11 how was percent. Stalin's death regarded by the public in Greece? Did they see a, a threat of war coming out of it? Well, I think that most of them saw in the death of Stalin the going away of a powerful figure uh, that they had... Um, Did it make them optimistic or pessimistic? Rather optimistic. Optimistic, I see. Uh, One of the... I don't know if that is a perfect guessing. <laughs> One of the things that our people now regard as rather hopeful, sir, has been the agreement recently signed between your country and Turkey and Yugoslavia, this tripartite pact. Uh, now, sir, what just could you tell our viewers exactly what the significance of that pact is, in your opinion? Well, to put it uh, in a very large line, I think that the significance, the primordial significance of this pact is that the free, the frontier of the free world now is the Danube. The da you think that, da uh, that our frontier against Russia is now the Danube? Now the Danube. If any but one of these countries were attacked, you have Greece, Turkey, and uh, Yugoslavia, in this pact, if any one of these countries were attacked, say, by Russia, would the other two countries be obligated to come to the defense of those, uh, that well, country? Well, that's, that's the sense of the, this pact. Well, and yes. our military staffs are working out the details of that. Our, uh, our people recall that um, Marshal Tito was a very controversial figure in the United States. And, of course, uh, we remember that during your uh, war, when you were being attacked, that... Uh, Yugoslavia was sort of the privileged sanctuary where the communists hid, and now uh, you've made an ally of Tito. Uh, that brings up the, this question. Do you regard Tito as a dependable ally now against the Soviet oh, yes, Russia? 100% dependable. Do you think there's any chance of him swinging back to uh, 
the Soviets? Oh, I don't think he, he wants to do that, but even if he wants to do that, if he wanted to do that, I don't think that he could do that. You don't think it would last very long? No. Could you, could you venture an opinion, <coughs> since Marshal Tito is now is paying a state visit uh, in London, in London. Uh, could you venture an opinion as to what the principal purpose of his visit is? Well, you must not forget that uh, Tito was in excellent relations with the labor uh, government and, uh, on the one hand, and then on the importance the British authorities are uh, touching on uh, bringing about a conciliation between, a conciliation between Tito on the one hand, and uh, Italy on the other. And settling the, the Trieste dispute. Yes, I think that's the... Uh, the principal aim of this visit. Well, sir, uh, yeah, I believe that, of course, you've been in the United Nations since 1946, and I believe your principal concern there now, <coughs> or one of your principal concerns, is over the several thousand uh, Greek soldiers who are still being held prisoner in, in Russia. Now, how did, how did uh, Russia get these prisoners, sir? Not only in uh, Russia, I know the coming from this country. During the guerrilla warfare in Greece, uh, the guerrillas attacked systematically outlying uh, frontier posts and the, uh, the, the our personal, personal uh, military personnel manning this uh, frontier post were transferred to the frontier north of Greece. Where, where, where were they uh, transferred? What, what uh, Soviet the prison camps? At the beginning, in Albania <coughs> and Bulgaria. Mm -hmm. But from there, they were transported. Some of them are still, of course. They, they were, they were in effect, uh, <coughs> kidnapped from Greece kidnapped. by, by the best word. parties that came over and, and captured them. And in now they are in uh, different uh, concentration camps throughout the whole country. Well, have you, had any, have you had any, any success in your efforts to get the Russians to return these prisoners? Not for the time being, but uh, I hope that on the long run, this resolution taken some days ago by the a political committee, and uh, which will be ratified tomorrow. Do the Russians, de deny, do the Russians deny, deny that these prisoners are there, by the way? Well, that's the tragic thing. They didn't deny it at these last meetings in the political committee. When I put out some figures, uh, the, the Russian delegate, uh, Mr. Zarubin, denied the figures. Hmm. Uh, by that way, implying indirectly that they were. They were actually there, so in principle it doesn't make a difference. I told further. them, and a lot of other fellow colleagues of uh, delegates told them that, well, it's the question is not if there are 3,000 or 2,000 or even two. Let's the Red Cross International Committee go there and ask them if they want, yes or not, to come back. Now, Mr. Ambassador, you are a very important member of the United Nations, so this is the reason well, I ask you this question. There have been reports, which may be rumors, that American prisoners of war from Korea are also in Soviet concentration camps. Have you he heard any reports to this effect? Yes, I heard. I heard some reports. Of course, I couldn't uh, say if uh, they correspond to facts, but well, when I think that there are some uh, Greek military personnel kidnapped and detained now in Tashkent, in Uzbekistan, I wonder why they wouldn't do the same thing with American prisoners in Korea. Well, <coughs> about Korea, sir, how many uh, troops does Greece have in Korea now? Uh, when uh, the request of the Security Council was made in '50, we offered at once one brigade. But at that time, it was after the first uh, successes and before the entrance into the play of the so-called volunteers from China, the Unified Command, who was General MacArthur at that time, thanked very gratefully the Greek government at that time, but uh, answered that one battalion would be enough. So you have yeah, one battalion, one battalion. about 1,200 men, and I believe they've, full size. They've, they've engaged in and a great deal of fighting and suffered yes. considerable casualties. Yes, you must have something around 450. Well, well as, uh, as the nation that uh, fought off the communists, and since you have been involved in the Korean War from the beginning with us, uh, do you have any solution to recommend to our viewers as to how we, might, uh, how we have to carry on in Korea? To carry on, to be patient, to be firm, and to be hopeful. Do you think we should have a more aggressive policy as has been recommended? As far as Korea... Aggressive perhaps 
spiritually. I wouldn't say that uh, aggress aggressiveness always pays. But if we are always mindful of our aims, and if we don't forget that their worries on the other uh, side are much bigger than ours, then I'm quite sure that they, they have something to worry about too. Then oh yes, much there are we have. I believe there are almost a million Americans, almost one million Americans of, of Greek origin in this country, Some sir. And I'm I'm sure that they would like to hear from you some expression as to uh, living conditions in Greece now. We know that there was once a great deal of suffering, starvation. Are your people getting enough to eat now? Oh yes, it's the conditions improves very uh, every day, more and more. You have, you have recovered from most of the devastation that the Germans yes. uh, brought there. From the Germans, the Italians of that time, and the guerrillas. Well, sir, as a, as a final question, uh, as far as the Middle East is concerned, do you think that there can be an expansion of this uh, tripartite agreement to take in other nations in the Middle East so that we can erect something really strong in the Middle East against Soviet aggression? Well, we have in this tripartite uh, pact a clause asking the neighboring countries to come in. And do you think but that there's a pretty good chance of getting some of them in? That depends from Moscow and that depends from uh, the population there. But well, I think that we had something, you had something uh, else in mind. You thought of perhaps of this uh, Middle East Pact. Yes, uh, you, you think. Well, sir, I believe that our time is about up, and so thank you very much for being with us this evening. <laughs> the opinions that you've heard our speakers express tonight have been entirely their own. The editorial board for this edition of the Longine Chronoscope was Mr. William Bradford Huey and Mr. Hardy Burt. Our distinguished guest was the Honorable Alexis Kirou, permanent delegate from Greece to the United Nations. The pleasure of giving a Longines watch is surpassed only by the pride that comes from receiving one. For owning a Longines watch is like owning a thoroughbred, a champion, the best in its class. It's a fact that only Longines, among the world's finest watches, has won so many honors for elegance, excellence, and accuracy in international competition at world's fairs, at the great government observatories, and in fields of precise timing. The meticulous craftsmanship of the Longines watch is evidenced in its faultless performance as a timepiece, its rare beauty as a piece of fine jewelry. Yet, unbelievably, you may buy and own or proudly give a Longines watch for as little as seventy-one fifty. For Easter, for an anniversary, for a birthday, or any important gift occasion, throughout the world, no other name on a watch means so much as Longines the world's most honored watch, the world's most honored gift, premier product of the Longines Whitnor Watch Company, since 1866, maker of watches of the highest character. We invite you to join us every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday evening at this same time for the Longines Chronoscope, a television journal of the important issues of the hour, broadcast on behalf of Longines, the world's most honored watch, and Whitnor, distinguished companion to the world honored Longines. This is Frank Knight, reminding you that Longines and Whitnor watches are sold and serviced from coast to coast by more than 4,000 leading jewelers who proudly display this emblem, agency for Longines Whitnor watches. Terry with Gary Moore on the CBS Television Network.